Good morning, y'all. I have some things that I want to talk about, and I figured I would get my exercise done while we're doing so. It is Wednesday, and while yesterday I got my exercise in, I just needed a break from content stuff while I'm getting better. Because that cold did take a lot out of me, and, you know, it is a lot to deal with when you're really sick. And yes, I've seen that the clown jester, because he's desperate for attention, any attention is good attention, made the challenge of me riding on my squeaky bike. Why the fuck are you still watching me? No, don't even answer that, because I know in the commentary community that there are some that can keep it to the target of focus. Normally for me, it's the heifer and heifer adjacents. And then there are some that just get off on any attention being brought their way. There are some that watch my videos to mock, even though I would much prefer my fat ass be working out and getting better than to be shoveling copious amounts of food in my face. And no, I will not be accepting any monetary offers from Aldi's Montel ever. I don't need to eat an apple for you. I don't know what kind of fetish or kinks you're fucking into, but it's not for me. And as far as my bike squeak, it's going to squeak because it gets used. So I'm going to leave it at that because honestly, I just don't like him. And when I don't like somebody, I don't like some people who, I'm not going to knock it if it's your dopamine hit. But for me, if I don't like somebody, I just don't fuck with them. I don't have the energy. I know a lot of creators out there, they just love back and forth beefs between themselves and other people. It gets their happy buttons pushed. But I'm not one of those people. Maybe 10 years ago, if y'all had caught me out there on Twitter or something, y'all might have had a chance. But at my age, I just want to have fun. I just want to protect my peace. I don't want to be in the back and forth with these people. They like to go real life. They like to insult people on so many stupid levels. And, you know, people insult me on the superficial all the fucking time, so I just learned not to care. I can't let words on the fucking internet hurt me deep enough to where I got to have a personal vendetta. But I do have a limit on what I will put up with people now. Once I set that boundary, I do not let anybody who has that boundary cross back over. I'm an introvert, and once that door is closed, I don't open it again. <clears throat> Trust is hard for me as it is, and I just wanted to navigate YouTube chaotic neutrally. I like who I like. I don't ever want to have to feel like because I kick it with somebody that I got to have a personal vendetta set against me by another person who might not like them. This is not fucking high school. But I see this is how we're going to play. And granted, I like going on panels now. In fact, I know Hannibal's doing a panel tonight, but depending on how late he gets it started, I might not be able to make it on because even though the book is finished, and now I'm just down to rereading to catch any errors with the editor and work on scripts for the web comics. I do like getting sleep. When I don't get sleep, my body starts to show me, hey girl, this ain't it. You need to be resting. You need to be getting some actual rest. You should not be uh, up so late. And unfortunately for me, I get to a point where not only does my mind start to fuck around, but it's easier for me to get sick. So I really do start putting in my uh, good nights by 12.30 most nights now. And even that's kind of late for me because I like sleep. Sleep becomes your best friend after 40. You don't believe me? Watch. But I can't sleep as much as the fucking heifer. Like, I have never done an 8 to 14 hour sleep. Now you're sick. That is insane to me. But maybe it is because I'm a mom. And I just don't know how to sleep that long. 7 is normally the longest I can get in the night most nights without popping up because bladders don't care what time it is. So it is funny to me that she can sleep that long. But getting back to the point of it, the creator stuff. Because as much as I like calling out the heifers, I also like sitting back and listening to different creators' perspective on things. 
And I know a lot of people who I like don't like other people and vice versa. And I said it on Saturday and I mean it. Any creator I personally don't like, I've made the declaration and then I block them because I don't fuck with them. I am not going to be one of those people that constantly has to fight with somebody online because I don't like them. Because they say shit that I don't agree with. I just keep it pushing. And one of the topics that I know may come up tomorrow is the whole Jan's views thing. Now I like Jan. I think Jan represents um, somebody that I probably grew up around. I have aunties that are kind of like Jan where it comes to her values, her ideals, and the stuff that she believes in. I also know that when she gets pressed, like a lot of people, she's very reactionary. I know how it feels to be very reactionary. And Jan said something the other day while I was listening in because I was nursing a really nasty stomach bug that I probably personally wouldn't agree with because of my own situation. Because of the way young black children, especially here in America, are viewed as older than we are. You know, I developed early on as a child. I, not to be too TMI, actually started menstruating at 11. And by the time I was in junior high school, I was already uh, rocking a rack. Let's put it that way. So you can only imagine the nightmare scenarios, especially after what happened to me happened. And the whole idea that somebody underage is sexual, I'm not going to act like that doesn't happen. But I do feel that in this scenario, anybody who's older, especially if they're double the age almost, should know not to pursue anything sexual with a child. It's, there's no argument for it. There is no acceptable scenario where anybody under the age of 18, and even 18 for me, should be even in their crosshairs of a 40-year-old. But we live in a society that looks away from shit like that. And what I was going to say, if I did get on panel, for uh, Jan's sake, because I know she took it to where it, her profession allowed her to see things. Her worldview has her believing that Chantal, because this was about Chantal, and her scenario at being 16, and going with a 40-year-old who was already in a relationship with somebody who was pregnant. I know that I have to, su I have to suspend the bias that I feel towards the heifer when looking at this. And it's kind of hard when you don't like the subject, but the core fundamental thing I feel is that at 16, nobody 40 years old should be looking at a child that way. That man was a predator. There's no other way to put it. I don't care how hot the trot Chantel was, the man was a predator. And he was the adult in the situation. He had all the power to turn her away. On the flip side, about Chantel's personality though, which I would have loved to brought up if I could. Tonight I might try if I can get into the panel if it's early enough. Here's the fact that Chantal has a template. Her mother was 16 when she chased her father and thought that a relationship with that man would make her an adult. My mom almost mirrored that. She was 17. But the difference is my dad was actually only two years older than her. So it made kind of sense for them, but it still didn't make it right. And there has been a societal stigma on women from the fucking jump. We're either too fast or too crude. Everything is our fault, even when we're the victims of our attacks. So it is a rough subject to tread. And then when you think about generations, because this was what I was gonna bring up in regards to Jan's feeling on Chantel. You'd be surprised at how much internalized misogyny that women of all ages sometimes ingest. Depending on how you're raised, depending on your faith, depending on the demographic that you're raised up about. Because don't act like our community doesn't have them old heads who think a girl's too fast. 
She acts too grown for her age. Oh, look at her body. There ain't no child. Trust me. I heard that from men I consider uncles in New York. It was gross then. It's gross now. The only difference is our society is now more prone to calling that shit out than it used to be. And that's where I think Jan's disconnect from the argument comes. Because she says a lot of things that I heard even from aunties about the girls being aggressive and too fast. And I'll even say, bring back that template again, Chantel probably thought, because that was how her mother got her, by going with an older man at a younger age and trying to start a family, that that would give her that validation. Chantel is all about male validation. Point blank period, you can see it. As somebody who struggled with daddy issues when I was younger, that's why I ended up with a, a very awful person when I was 19 and he was almost 40. It happens, but you need to learn from it. She got lucky that that guy only wanted to do sexual things with her and didn't try to trap her into a relationship where he did worse. But it's not right. And you will never hear me say that what that adult did to that then child is okay. But what I think people ignore is that there's a whole series of generational trauma with women where we're forced to accept a society that shifts the blame of things onto us and takes away our ability to even be sexual. I think it's a weird conundrum to be in where there are people that think, oh, the innocence of it. But when you flip it around on a 16-year-old boy, a lot of times they get props for being considered sexually active and aggressive. It's fucked up in either scenario, but it's really easier to clutch your pearls at the idea of putting the blame on a 16-year-old whose literal family makeup or dynamic conditioned her to believe that the only way for her to feel valued and validated is to be desired by a man. Point blank. Chantel is just copying what she saw. Does it make it right? No. Does it make what the 40 year old did to her right? No. But you gotta understand that when you have that mentality that you need to have a man in your life or a partner in your life because that's what your parents' dynamic was, it's really easy to see where Chantel's mind was and how much she didn't care. She also has a thing where once she gets something and she obsesses over it, it's game over. She will not let go until she has to let go. So I'm just saying that might not have been where Jan was coming from with this because she did get reactionary with both your mama and anybody that called her out. But as somebody who I calmed down a lot <laughs> as I gotten older, so I'm not as reactionary, I can almost feel the mindset that she had when trying to defend herself because she grew up in a society where women literally have to capitulate that we're frail and we need to be protected and that our sexual desires have to be tapered down because we have to project this air of innocence and anything else is less than. And I was going to bring up the fact that it's, a, a, it's really a generational thing now because even as Gen X, I have friends that are more like me who are not okay with shit like this due to our own traumas and stuff. And then I know others who are like raised to be almost stepford wives and believing that everything that goes, a woman goes through is somehow her fault. One of the things I was going to talk about was Angela Lansbury. I know a lot of us Gen Xers know her from Murder, She Wrote. I also know her from the Broadway production of Sweeney Todd. She's one of my favorite actresses and she passed, I think, about two years ago. One of the things she said before she passed, though, gave me pause. Because everybody knows that around 2015, 2016, the Me Too movement came out. And the Me Too movement shined a light on actresses and celebrities in general who were the victims of TV producers, movie producers, music moguls. We started seeing more stories about people who were being taken advantage of by these execs. And Angela Lansbury, who at that time was a sweet old nana, gave the interview to say, 
I don't understand why we needed this movement. Women like me had to put up with that kind of stuff and we just toughed it out. She really had the mindset that women speaking up was a bad thing because she went through it and you just tough it out and it makes you a tougher person. And there are generations of elders who still believe that. There are people out there that will still put the onus on women. Look at the R. Kelly thing. He went after underage girls in our fucking community. He got away with it for years. People laughed at the Aaliyah thing, which I didn't think was fucking funny at all. I was horrified. But our community didn't want to address it. He's a celebrity. She's a celebrity. Even when Finding R. Kelly came out, people around our community would still say, oh, those girls just want to get paid. They did the same thing to Bill Cosby's victims, too. The fact of the matter is, our society has a fucked up way of putting the blame on victims of making it feel like these girls somehow put themselves in this scenario so they deserve what they got. And it's fucked up. But we can't pretend like that shit doesn't go on. Just because some of you have opened your eyes to how fucked up it is and speak up doesn't mean it doesn't exist in our community and beyond. One of the things I like to say to people is you gotta be mindful that some elders They've had the social conditioning for decades. They don't mean harm by it. And I am sure, as a mom, Jan would not want any of her kids to experience something like that. But I also think there's a confliction there between understanding the psychological issues that Chantal carries, coupled with the bias of not liking her, that makes her believe that, yeah, even though this 40-year-old that shouldn't have slept with her, was a predator, that Chantel somehow shares some of the blame. And that would be what I would have disagreed with if I was on that panel that night. Because honestly, it doesn't matter how sexually aggressive a teen is, because let's not pretend 16 year olds aren't hormonal and ready to experiment. We've all been there. Even those of us who are broken have been there. I think that when it's that much of an age gap, this wasn't a 20 year old, this wasn't an 18 year old. This was a man old enough to know better. The onus is on him. The onus was on him to send her the fuck away. And instead he took advantage. And he's one of millions that would have. Let's not pretend that these men don't exist. Some of them still have platforms on YouTube. If you know, you know. Some of them get kicked off the platform and manage to come back. There is a whole ass belief system that the younger, the fresher, and it's disgusting, I felt the bile raise up in my throat as I said that much. It is a serious issue in our society because some men are conditioned to believe that the fresher, the better. And I don't even understand what they mean by fresher, except the fact that they allude to younger me is more chances of being a virgin. It's fucked up. And we can pretend to be outraged and act like it's not going on, or we can call all the motherfuckers out when we see it. We also need to understand that sexuality for some people begin early. And it's not okay by any means. But to act like it doesn't happen because we would never engage and indulge in it? Nah. When I lived in New York City, I seen so many different angles of these situations. I seen young girls, especially in the church, who were taught, guard it. Guard it until you get married. And they tried their best. And then if the unfortunate happened, like what happened to me at 14, it's somehow our fault. We somehow have to live with the taint of something that was out of our control because we were taught to guard and protect something that honestly is just a symbol. It doesn't really fucking matter in the long run. But our society has conditioned women to believe from the onset that somehow sexuality has to be a closely guarded, protected thing. And that somehow being more liberal with our body and who we accept as partners 
is a negative reflection on us. And it's just, it's tiring. And I know I walk a fine line because as much as I enjoy that aspect of relationships, it was never a main feature because of my trauma. I've always been more of, I need to trust somebody before I could even let them close enough to consider that. But not a lot of people have gone through my trauma. And I think if I hadn't gone through my trauma at 16, I might have been way faster. I think it taught me a life lesson about who I wanted in my life in that realm. And it also gave me a complex. It made me think that I needed to gain weight so that the only men that would come after me had to be into me. So please, when you're weighing in on people's mindsets, when you're weighing in on women's sexuality, when you're weighing in on predators, don't just come with a hard line stance. Be willing and able to look at it from different angles and perspectives. I don't know if it comes from the fact that I have a literal mental health issue and a sociopathic thought process when it comes to things. I get super analytical when it comes to scenarios. I also like to sit back and listen. That's why I knew when Jam was responding to the clown jester and the GP, that was coming from a reactionary place. A lot of commentators do that. They get really hyped up to prove that they're right in this situation. And for me, I've never been about being right. I just like presenting the facts and people will take it as they want. And I can see where Jan was coming across with acknowledging that Fuyu may have been hypersexualizing herself for male validation, had the template of Shmi's conceiving of her and her antics behind it. But I can also see GP and Hannibal's point that even if Chantal was sexually aggressive, seeking a man to validate herself, that 40 year old had all the power in that scenario and should have put a stop to it. But what I'm telling all of you is that there are a lot of men out there and if you try to pretend like it's not like that, I'm calling you suspect, that would fucking jump at the chance of being with somebody that young. It's fucking disgusting. And me saying that is not, oh, Cal's justifying it. Cause no, fuck no. Especially as a parent, fuck no. But it is a reality. And we gotta stop trying to come off as like moral crusaders about what we would and what we do when it comes to complex scenarios like this. Because all it does is lead to arguing. All it does is lead to back and forth that are unnecessary and takes away from the conversation we should be having about teaching kids about sexual or sexual identity, sexual orientation, about how to be safe, and that it doesn't validate your character or anything about you to be sexually active early. We need to stop the stigmas of shame for young girls, period. We need to understand our own bodies and biology makeup. And we need to be guiders instead of trying to deny people because then they just go around sneaking around. It has been statistically proven that in places where kids learn uh, sex ed early, that they are more likely to make better choices in regard to safe sex practices, abstinence if they want, or having a partner where they don't rush into things. But we still struggle as a society with these weird, archaic, almost puritanical beliefs in sexuality and who's allowed to have sex or who's allowed to do this and that, and it's fucking sick. Now, I learned listening to GP because I was writing an en bomb script while listening to him yesterday afternoon. And I don't chat in a lot of people's chats right now while I'm working, but I was writing, and he said something that almost made me type in chat about in the 40s, there were chastity belts. It made me laugh because I think he was joking, but GP, if you're serious about that, chastity belts are way, way ahead of that. Think of a couple of centuries back, history nerd here. And back then, it was a way for a knight to ensure that his 
uh, wife or betrothed, because she didn't even have to be a wife. It'd just be a lady whose hand was promised to him. And other royals did it too, to lock up what they thought was their possession. Now, I'm not saying the 1940s and 1950s weren't bad for misogyny, but they didn't have no misogyny belts back then. I'm just saying, historical nerd here had to interject that chastity belts were way, way, way before Jan's time. So I get what you were doing. I know you were trying to be funny. At least I hope so. The fact of the matter is there is a generational stigma when it comes to sexuality that I hope one day our society moves away from and just becomes a place of knowledge, learning, understanding that the mindset is fucked up. As somebody who loves uh, Egyptology and the ancient civilization of Egypt, they didn't have a word for virginity. Now, I'm not going to say they didn't do fucked up things because it's like I said about most royal families. There are some fucking horror stories in history. Incest, child brides, all that kind of stuff. And we still have child brides going on here in this day and age in different countries. But one of the things about Egypt is a woman's value wasn't placed highly in the purity. It was placed in their looks and sensuality. The better looking and more partners a woman that eats in Egypt in, in certain scenarios. Not if you were poor. Let's get that straight. And it's kind of the same in our society now. Poor girls are not allowed to be sexually fluid. But in Egyptian nobility, it was almost expected for some women to be alluring and noble. And the only exempt from that were priestess and poor women. The fact of the matter is, our society has always been fucked up in the views of women and how we carry ourselves, what we do for our own bodies, what's the appropriate age is for us to even experience sexual awakening. And it's, it's hard because not, it's not a one size fit all thing for women. Depending on our trauma, depending on our backgrounds, depending on our upbringing, we can have a twisted mindset on what's allowed. I know that even some of my friends think some of my views are a bit conservative. Because for Greg and I, even though we were dating for quite a while, it wasn't until we said I do that we consummated because that's his beliefs. The fact of the matter is, I was okay with that because of my trauma. And it made me trust him more. But not everybody is like that. Not everybody understands what that's like. And I don't base my experience as a template for everybody else's experience. And I think that is one of the good things about my sociopathic brain, is that unlike somebody who is a narcissist sociopath, I understand that nobody lives my life. Nobody can live my life. They might have similar experiences as I do, but they will never have the same experiences as I do. So I never look at a scenario with just a black and white mindset. I'm always looking at the probabilities. I'm always breaking it down and analyzing it, taking the information that I do know and applying it. And that's how my brain has always worked, even as a kid. When friends would come to me, <coughs> if they were fighting each other, and they wanted me to take a side, and I would listen to what both of them said. And a lot of times, both of them were in the wrong at some point. And they didn't always want to hear that. They didn't want to hear, well, why did you say this about them? Well, why did you talk about their mom when their mom's not even in this such a situation? Because when people hurt, they just want to get away. When they are hurting about something that they might not even want to talk about, they will lash out at shit that doesn't even have anything to do with the scenario. And I always thought maybe I was a bit weird for being able to mediate like that. Being able to listen and realize that, honestly, this fight is just stupid and it's, I don't want no parts of it. But there are a lot of people out there that do that. And if you're one of them, never feel bad that you don't personally want to get involved in some back and forth like that because it doesn't give you a dopamine hit. 
I think honestly the problem with YouTube right now is there are too many people that this is fun for them. And I try to be mindful of that, especially being a part of the drama, reaction, girl world community. That there are going to be creators that they get their jollies, pick up fights with other creators and going back and forth. And there are people that take it to levels that I would never give my energy to. And that's just on them. I think I can remain chaotic neutral because I don't know you people outside this sphere. I'm never going to meet you. You're never going to be close enough to me for me to care that deeply. And that's another thing that I give credit to having my mental things about. I just don't have the capacity to care on that level. But as you can see, y'all, that is 30 minutes of working out. I'm getting closer and closer to that goal weight. Once I do, there's so much I have on the horizon plan. But for now, I am going to go cool down, wash up, relax, probably get back to editing after I install the glow light, grow lights, and long boxes in the greenhouse. It's going to be a busy day, y'all, and I hope that you have a good Wednesday. I hope that you know that no matter what, you can't prove to people that you've changed. You can only keep proving to yourself and being a better person. And then you will attract the people that you are meant to have around you. Stop chasing popularity, especially at 40 plus, because it's a waste of time. You need to be your own cheering section a lot of times, and you don't need to be chasing social validation. That's just how I feel on things. It'll come to you if you really want it when you stop caring about it. But I'm going to go get cleaned up, y'all. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.